What's up everybody, Nat here and today I want to talk about the use of generic types. So if you see code like this where we use less than, greater than and then the node name which really is the class name. So remember how I talked about all the extra code necessary to get the right node? Well, you can use generic types and that way you don't have to do the cast. And that means the conversion from, for example, node 2D to screen shake in this case. So we are basically telling that we want to use screen shake so that we can call this function. Now, because I'm lazy, I really don't like to figure out that I need to use get parent and then get node. I also don't like to use node paths because it is already included in the class name. So my wish is that Godot could figure this out on its own. So I created a generic type function myself and it is called get node. And this function is a copy paste function. You don't have to modify anything in it, which was necessary in my previous code. So I improved my function and it looks like this. So don't get confused with the T. It is just, we don't want to specify the class. It should be a generic type. That means I don't have to write screen shake or Smurf or Gandalf or Batman, whatever name you have of your class. You just want to specify it once in the call in between the less than and the greater than characters. So basically you call get node and you enter any node that you want to start from. Here it figures out the node name and the first try is to just call get node and if it returns nothing that means it returns null then continue on to the next so in this case is a get parent and then get node and then in the next case it uses find node and that is they search from n or the node and don't search the parents but it search the children recursively inside the node and as a last resort it goes to the grandparent if you want which is the first node in the tree, in the whole tree. And then it searches all the children recursively. And if nothing is found, it tried to do a cast anyway. But in this case, it will throw an exception. Well, I'm pretty certain of it. I could add support for exception, but I'm lazy so I will get notified anyway if it crashes. I'm sure there are a couple of more experienced programmers that will scream no don't do it like this. I know I should do things better but who cares in about 100 years. Anyway just to prove that this works I can start the game. And here we have the very weak big boss that dies in one shot. And you saw the screen shake. I will leave this code for you to download if you want. If you wish to use it. But I'm not sure how it will work if you export the game to other platforms. But I think it will work. I believe it will work. Let me know if the code I did has any use to you. 
I will for certainty use generic function calls just thinking out loud. So thank you for watching. If you like this video then click the like button. If you want more videos like this then why not subscribe. If you want full control and receive all videos, mine or any other channels that you are subscribed to then click the bell notification and that way you really tell YouTube that you want to see the videos that you subscribe to. Alright, take care and I see you in my next video. Bye bye.